Move that extra <sighs> pillow out of there. Okay. What's going on, uh, everyone? And hold on, and there's also a dog toy on the thing next to you. Welcome back to the podcast. Hey, uh, what? We're in. We're rolling, buddy. You can start at the beginning over. Yeah, people beginning. like that. People like us. You yeah. know, they want to know that we're real people. So, you know, real things go on. Like things being in the background that you probably did or did not see. I don't know. I have to check the angles. But welcome back to another uh, travel podcast here. Uh, Josh, that's my. That's me. I'm Josh. And I'm Taylor. Really bad at introductions. So welcome. Oh my god. To travel with Josh and this Taylor. This is starting off quite interesting. I know, today. right? Look, Look at Sully. He's got to come over there and. Hi, buddy boy. <laughs> That's right. Take a seat right next to me. Or that guy I am. On the ledge. Your arm's in his way. <sighs> He's fine. No, now he wants attention. <laughs> oh. uh, anyway. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody, uh, to another episode. Uh, this week, we are going to probably talk a little bit about. Probably, or we are. We are. We're going to be talking a little bit about river cruising. Uh, it's something that. Uh, oh gosh, Sullivan. It's something that we got to do, jeez, uh, oh, I can't believe it's been like two years now, I think. Well, not technically. Technically, it was in 2022, but it was in December of 2022. It's only the beginning I, of 2024. I guess. about a year and a half or more. Yeah. But uh, it's just crazy to think that that's how long ago it was, uh, because it feels like it was just yesterday, and it was just such an awesome trip. So we never really got to do a podcast about it or take like a deep dive into it. No, we did not. And so I thought maybe this episode could be kind of something like maybe things that we didn't expect or um, maybe like kind of some surprises that came with yeah. taking a river cruise. Um, and I think this won't necessarily be a deep dive, but just covering some of the things because there's a lot more to river cruising than than other vacations. Sure. And... I don't think a lot of people even know about river cruising because I will tell you that we really didn't even know about river cruising until we were about to go on one. Um, I had heard of like some cruises on the Mississippi river, but I never thought about cruising on rivers in like Europe and Africa and like pretty much everywhere else. Well, I think that that kind of comes back to the surprises or things that we didn't really expect yeah. With a river cruise, you know, I mean, we've done so many ocean cruises, right? I think when we just got on when Allure we did of the Allure Seas, of the Seas, that was number 20. That was number 20. So, um, we're, whether you count uh, Margaritaville at sea or not, um, that'll be the 21st cruise. Margaritaville at sea, the first time we went, I did count in the okay. 20. Yeah. So, so, technically, we stayed overnight twice, two nights on margaritaville and we yeah. were out on the ocean so yeah. i don't know how you can't count yeah. well, it was the sailing. app right or whatever that app that you use or wasn't that what it was it was like you try yes, to put it in, in you couldn't find well it. initially it was not coming up on there but now it does yeah so, so it's so, official yeah so we'll have margaritaville at sea will be 21 um and so out of the 21 did you include the river cruise in that or is that just ocean cruises no that was just ocean cruises okay. River so, cruise is completely different, does not count. Well, if you think about You're, water, it's on a no, body of water. No, no, we've done one river cruise. That's 20, the list it's on. And 20 You river- can't put it on my Shipmate app, so it doesn't count. Okay. So <laughs> so we've done 20 cruises. It'll be 21 soon, and only done one river cruise. And yes. I think that that one river cruise, honestly, like goes above and beyond all of the ocean cruises that we have done. Yeah, so I can say that we've had a lot of, obviously we've had good experiences on ocean cruises, but the river cruise is just so much different, and we did not really realize how different it was until we got on board. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, you're going, you're traveling by boat, and you're seeing different places, but it's just a completely different experience, not just from the size of the boat, but the activities that you do, the places that you're able to get to, um, because the rivers go inside the countries versus the ocean cruises that can only hit the coast. Um, so it's just a completely unique experience. And if you've never heard of a river cruise or thought about doing a river cruise, this is definitely something you should consider. Um, 
whether you've liked ocean cruises or if you haven't liked ocean cruises, because this is very different from an ocean cruise. Yeah. It, 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 it 100% is. Um, it is. Yeah. So, well, I think like, let's, let's kind of like start from the beginning. Um, as far as river cruising goes, I think the biggest thing that holds a lot of people back, at least that we hear of is the price. And yes, it is yes. Um, more expensive than an ocean cruise at face value. Right, your ocean yeah. cruise is going to include your accommodations, so whatever room that you're staying in inside Ocean View, balcony, concierge, whatever. Right, that base price that you pay is for that, for your food, um, which is usually going to be a buffet, and the main dining room, some kind of quick service um, included locations. But that really does vary from cruise line to cruise line, mm-hmm. um, and then basic beverages. And and I just had, uh, I did another podcast with one of uh, the agents from Gonco Getaways um, where we were talking about how basic drinks or the basic beverage package that's included with your accommodations, your base price changes from cruise line to cruise line. It does. You know, Disney, you have um, Coke soda. products. Includes all the soda. Yeah. And in the ancient um, soda fountain machines <laughs> up on the pool deck. They are, but they're convenient. <laughs> uh, if you sail with, Virgin Voyages, they include uh, soda in their drink packages, but like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, um, your base drinks are is just water, basic tea. coffee and tea, lemonade, um, lemonade, and like some juices maybe At in the morning only. or yeah. So, um, you know, you don't get a lot for what we really like to call an all inclusive trip on an ocean cruise. Yes. Yeah, right. I mean, in an ocean cruise, you could technically pay your base price for your stateroom, your taxes, whatever, and you never have to spend another dollar once you get on board, except for your gratuities, but you can also prepay those, so you never have to pay anything else. But the nice thing about a river cruise is, same thing, you can pay for everything, you pay one price, technically, and everything's taken care of ahead of time. But what's nice about river cruises that's not included on ocean cruises is an excursion every single day, drinks with lunch and dinner, and that's beer and wine and soda. Um, And then your accommodations, there's like snack times, there's tea times. Um, I think another big one is Wi-Fi. Oh, Wi-Fi is included. Wi-Fi is really expensive sometimes on ocean cruises, depending on the cruise line that you go with, uh, and it's included. On, yeah. like, almost all river cruise companies, they, they will include Wi-Fi. And there is coffee and tea included as well. And that's not, like, super specialty coffee, but they have, like, one of those, like, fancy machines on, like... And I've looked at multiple different river cruise lines, not just the one that we cruised with. Um, and they all have some sort of coffee-type machine that can make cappuccinos, hot chocolates, uh, macchiatos. Yeah. Um, I had, I think I had a chocchiato in the one that we were on. Um, so it does do a few different things. And then there's always water available. Um, that's like a, you can just walk out to the lounge area on most river cruise ships are pretty much set up the same. Um, I've looked at a bunch of different ship maps just to see what they all look like. And, um, obviously they're a little different, but got the same idea. Yeah. Um, I think a really big selling point for river cruises because people that I have talked to that didn't enjoy an ocean cruise Most of the things that they say is they got seasick and they didn't like that. And another thing people say is that they didn't like how many people were on it. So those are two things that are very, very different when you go on a river cruise. Yeah. I mean, like, let's back up for a second here. Um, And just because I I kind of brought up the pricing structure a little bit and how at face value, right, it seems very expensive to take a river cruise, but Really, when you start adding in all of those extra things on an ocean cruise that you get with a river cruise, the price is actually really comparable. It's um, pretty close. One, on your ocean cruise, once you add in excursions, a beverage package, specialty dining, um, you know, whatever else you can think of. Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi even, just Wi-Fi. Um, once you add all those things, because you're not thinking about that when you first book an ocean cruise. You're just like, oh, this cruise costs... for us. Let's do it. Right. 
And then later on, you pay $1,000 for the drink package, yep. and you add a few hundred dollars for Wi-Fi for the whole week. And then you want to do excursions at all the ports, and you stop at four places, and yeah. that's like another couple hundred dollars. So, yep. you know, adding it, all those things in, it, it adds does up. start yeah. to add up. Yeah. But you're not thinking about that initially because, right. like Josh said, at face value, an ocean cruise looks much cheaper. Yeah. In some cases, it can be a lot cheaper, but oh, it depends yeah. what kind of experience you're looking at doing. Yeah, so let's um, let's let's like break into like our actual like river cruise. Well, before trip. we do that, I didn't even I didn't get to finish my thought about the um, the people, the amount of people on the cruise. Right. You don't realize this. You you see it whenever you go to like book a river cruise or. You know, you're working with your travel agent from Gold Gal Getaways, and they help you book your river cruise. The capacity of most river cruise ships is like 250 people. Like, yeah, it's not. It's not nobody. even actually really that high. So, and and it's rarely ever even the yeah. maximum amount of people. Right. Um. I don't. I think there was what 120 people on the one that we went on. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like, let's get into the actual river cruise part, and then we can start breaking further into a lot of these, like, things, like the people on board. Um, okay. Because, uh, you know, one thing I think that was really surprising for us was embarkation day. So, embarkation day. I guess day, that's pretty much the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we obviously we could talk about the flights. I don't think that that really matters. There's as not much really anything. Yeah, can, the flights we had to book ourselves. Yeah. But what's really nice is transfers to and from the airport. Are included. Well, not not only that, but transfers transfers are actually included from your hotel. hotel from if you're going to take a train in to where yep. um, the cruise is embarking at, uh, and or whatever. Like they really, I think that's a, probably a, it's a very fair point. Like that is a huge difference because um, for us, for example, right on Norwegian, so we're doing our group cruise in July, mm-hmm. um, and Norwegian will charge you. Uh, I think it's seventy five dollars per person each way, and that's pretty comparable because I think Disney charges seventy five dollars sure. per person each way, right? From like Disney World to Port Canaveral, or and, from the airport to Port Canaveral. Yeah, and so you can still um, with that transportation, you could, like I would call and tell them that hey, I have this client, they're flying in on this day, and they want transportation, mm-hmm. and they'll take you to the hotel, and then they'll also take you to the embarkation port, yep. but that's seventy five dollars you have to pay per person, so. If you add that in, right, like, again, this is where the value of a river cruise comes into play, yes. that it really makes it worth it, and it's really nice. Um, and, I mean, speaking of embarkation day, what's cool, too, is that when they – somebody picks you up, so they have, like, a – you know, they have a sign. Doesn't they necessarily, literally had a sign. They didn't have your said, name on it, but it says Emerald, I think. Yeah, whatever your river cruise line is that you decide to go with, they will have a sign standing there. Yeah. And this is, like – because we saw other ones there, Just too. Scenic like, was there. If you think about ocean cruises, if you've done one or you've watched videos on them um, or you just, you know, from other people talking about them, whatever. With ocean cruises, every single cruise line has standard things that is pretty much the same across the board. Right. You know what type of experience you're getting. Industry gonna, standards. Yes, industry standards. You know what type of experience you're going to get when you go on a cruise, an ocean cruise. It's the same thing with river cruising. No matter which river cruise line you decide to go with, because there are a ton out there, a lot of people I know think of Viking when they think of river cruises, which is like one of the top of the line river cruises. Yep. There are many others out there. Um, I We work with Emerald, Viking, Ama Waterways, Avalon. Um, there's probably more that I can't think right. of right now. Um, but there's a bunch of other river cruise lines out there. And they have industry standards as well. So pretty much all those things we talked about that are included in your price, that's not just for one of the cruise line, the river cruise lines. That's across the board. Yeah, I, well, I think I think anything that we're going to talk about today is a industry standard within the yes. river cruising company or river cruise. Yeah. Genre. Yeah. That's not the right word. Either, of course, but. you're going to have different. You know, if you think about like Walt Disney World or like cruise lines, you have like value and moderate and deluxe type levels of river cruises um but they all have things that they all offer sometimes the prices are different based on where you're going or what the cruise line is but 
Yes, industry standards. Yeah. It's pretty much what we're talking about. Yeah. And so when somebody was there to pick us up, I think it's also really nice to have uh, – it's nice to just have that included because we didn't have to then worry about, you know, how are we going to get from where we're at at the airport to where the cruise port's at? I mean, this is the other thing I think that was, I thought was really surprising. I thought was shocking was that like the entire time in my head, we've only done ocean cruises. So I'm expecting us to like go to a cruise port and like, you know, there's going to be dozens of cars and lots of people and it should be like easy to find. But even like leading up to this, I was like trying to Google search, like, where's the cruise port at? So yes, that we like could river get river cruise port in know, Basel, Switzerland. Cause I was like, do we want to take that transportation? Is it going to be like reliable? Is it worth it? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And like, it was honestly kind of difficult to find. And the reason is, is because they have like a general area, but where the, where the boat is going to be docked. Right. But yeah. they don't have like a port. There are no ports, and, and that like, is why. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of crazy. It's like one of, like, I think that was one thing that really surprised me. Um, there are literally docks along the river. They're not even, like, they're, they're not, not even really, like really docks in some cases. They're just places that are, like, cleared out that you could see something would maybe be parked right. there. They're um, pylons, and they can tie yes, off to the pylons. Like that's it. <laughs> you know? Um, because most of the cruise ships, uh, river cruise ships, will have their own uh, gangways mm-hmm. that they can lift up and drop and put in so that they don't necessarily have to have a dock on the side of the river, which is just like mind blowing. It's crazy. Actually, I would love to know like more about the logistics about how they figure out where they're going to dock at, at each place. Right. Or if they dock at the same place every single time, or if it's just like, okay, well somebody's already here. So you're going to have to park down there this time. Well, <laughs> well what comes in like well, that is a good that, I, that's a good thing to ask because think about it when we got there so he, so continuing on to what what Taylor's asking yeah. which I think is we a good got question. we got picked up in and, a nice private vehicle and, we rode with one other family yeah. that was also going on so our, it's not totally private but no it's but it is private somebody else that's yeah. going on your sailing right you're so not getting on a bus the, with, it was for Six of us. Yeah. Six of us in the back. Yeah. And they it were was from pretty, Hawaii, actually. It was I pretty think. spacious. Yeah, they were from yeah. Hawaii. They yeah. flew the whole way to Switzerland. Yeah. Um, and I think, so when we got there, expecting to see this port. Um, it was like a little neighborhood. It was like a little neighborhood, yeah. <laughs> and they, you're like looking around, and then all of a sudden, oh, there's the river, and there's the cruise ships, and you're like, what the There was heck two is this? side by side. And so, and that leads into what Kay- what Taylor was asking about, I think, which is interesting about do they have a place where they have to park each time or how does it work? Mm-hmm. Because another thing that you'll see a lot of while you're cruising and when you get to the stops is that the ships will actually stack um, oh, one yeah, on top of right. another. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because we work with Scenic, too. Scenic yeah. and Emerald are like the same company. Yeah. Um, but there was a Scenic boat docked. First, and right first along the bank. Along the bank. And then the Emerald boat was docked next to it. Yeah. So literally, like, attached. not like, not like behind it or in front of it. Like, no, B side. We had to walk across scenic ship to get onto our ship. Yep. Which is just we've done that one other time. Yep. And that was in Alaska when we got to Juneau, right? Didn't had it? Oh no, 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 we didn't do that. No, the boat pulled up next to our ship and we just walked across. You could have walked oh, yeah. right out to the other side. Yeah, so, yeah, no, yeah. that's not true. Um, but a little strange. But I think another again. It, it seemed strange for us. Sure. But that was like an, this is like an industry an indi- standard. It literally is. Yeah. Because we saw multiple other river cruise ships doing that other right. places. And when we got to another um, town or city, whatever, like a couple days later, ours was the one that was docked next to the bank. And another ship docked on the other side of us, and they had to walk on our ship. And I don't think it was scenic. Up the stairs, across the top of the boat, because there is like a top open deck. Yep. Um, they walk up the stairs, across the top open deck, and then walk across a little like bridge thing that they put up, and then they go onto their ship. And that's yeah. literally what we had done. Yeah. And it was, uh, I-, I think the other thing too, again, I hate, like, I don't mean to like continue to go back to it, but I think you really need to understand how much of a difference is this for motion cruising, which is that like embarkation day is so stressful. Like it's not Josh. It is plenty stressful for a lot of people because it's especially in a large port, right? With a bunch of other cruise lines. 
maybe we're just used to it. There's just a lot going on. I think we are used to it. Yeah. But, like, you know, you're waiting in line usually to check in. Yeah. You have to go through security and baggage. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to drop you know, your bags. You have to drop your bags off um, and then go through security and do check-in and have mm -hmm. all of your documents ready. And, um, you know, if, if something happens at the cruise port, like if the ship happens to just be a few minutes delayed or customs is having a hard time clearing them, it backs everything up. And so it can be really stressful. Uh, and then once you're finally able to get onto the ship, it does feel crowded because people don't have anywhere to go until the rooms are open and they yep. can go into the rooms. And I think like this was another huge difference because when they got to the port where the ship was at for the river cruise, there's not dozens, hundreds, thousands of people. They had a little pop-up tent with a couple employees from the cruise line and, standing there and they like they took like, our bags they're like are you on the emerald sky and we're like yep and they're like okay great they asked us for our name we gave them our name and they took our they check us off the list and they we went to go drag our bags and they're like no no we'll get them they're like yeah. we'll put them in your room later yeah. like we didn't even have to go look for them somewhere or like down a hall right they were in our room when the rooms were ready that afternoon yeah uh, they took us on a a tour of the ship when we got on. I mean, it wasn't really a tour, but like. That's why but, I said a tour, because but, there's only a couple rooms to see. Right. I mean, when you're expecting what you have on an ocean cruise, and she just like, I think she was like our cruise. Was she the cruise director or no? She was no, the she was like assistant. activities or Activities whatever. director or something. Yeah. When she like walked us on, I was like, just, I'm like, nobody's checking anything really. Like there was no real ID check. Um, there was no baggage. Like they're checking your bags or anything like it is such a relaxing and like almost carefree environment because yeah. you, you literally, we, we walked right across and that's when we asked, somebody asked about how many people uh, the ship holds. Most river cruises are between 150 and like 200 people. Yeah. Like the bigger, like bigger, newer ones are like 250 max. Right. And that's like, I mean, that's if every single room is full sold out with two Double guests capacity. in every single room. Right. Ours, I think, for the sailing only had maybe 120, I think, is what it was, she said. Ours was the last sailing of the Christmas market season. Right. And so we it was not a sold-out sailing. Yeah. Or uh, even close to it. Yeah, it, it, it was um, – it, yeah, it wasn't. And But, again, we walk onto the ship. She walks us down, back down the stairs, because you have to go across the top deck. We go back down. And then she's like, come in here and sit in the lounge, relax, mm -hmm. have some glue vine. Which, of course, like, I'm like, glue vine? You know, what the heck is that? You know, it's mm -hmm. just mulled wine. But, like, you know, have some glue vine. Have some coffee. You know, you can order. Lunch was about to be served. <laughs> right. You can order drinks if you want to. You know, and it was so different and just so relaxing. Mm -hmm. And I think it was so chill and relaxing. We did not know what to do with ourselves. We got stir crazy because we're like. We were literally sitting there, like, did not know what to do with ourselves. Yeah. 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 And uh, we did eventually at one point go like down to the main desk because you have to get like your card right? Um, to check in and out of the ship for yes. every single day, um, which uh, we found out later. And if we do a future cruise, I think this is definitely what we will do. We didn't realize. So it does not matter what time your flight gets in. They will take you to the ship. There may still be people from the previous sailing still on there. When you get on, like yeah. hanging out in the lounge, waiting to go to the airport. Well, well, that's what I wanted to bring up next was that I think another thing that's very different compared to river cruising and ocean cruising is that when you disembark for an ocean cruise, like it's disembarkation day. You don't get to hang out. No. You don't get to relax. Your flight's not till 10 o'clock at night. Sucks to suck. Get off the ship. Figure it out. <laughs> like that's the, that's how they work. Yeah. Right. Um, completely opposite. Yeah. Completely opposite. If it is it's so much more concierge like for absolutely. every get for every guest absolutely um because they're really while you are going on this trip and you're definitely going to be adventuring when you get to like the towns and stuff when you are on the boat they're trying to make sure that everybody is taken care of yeah. and i feel like this is one of the ways they do that so if your flight's super early in the morning, they make sure that you're on the first transportation to get to the airport or, right. you know, wherever it's train. Well, it's not even first. It's customized. Oh, yeah. It customized. is. Customized. It is. 100%. Like, completely. Um, if there's only one couple that's going to be on a flight in the afternoon, they're just like, 
okay, well, the boat's not leaving here until 8 o'clock at night, so just right. hang out, and uh, we'll let you know what time we're going to take you to the airport. It, w- <laughs> like- it was such an odd thing, because we're sitting in the lounge, and some lady comes by, yeah. and she's talking to us, and she's like, She's like, oh, well, you're just on the, you're like, you're just coming on today. And we're like, yeah. She's like, oh, I was just on, I was on here all last week. It was just a fantastic time. I'm like, what? We were really like, confused. Why are you still on the ship? You know, yeah. like, uh, but that's how it goes. It's, it's so yeah. nice. Oh, but the thing I was going to say that we didn't know that we would do for next time is the day we get on the ship, instead of sitting around on the ship being stir crazy. I think what we would do is still have that flight that gets in early in the morning, get the transportation to the ship, drop our stuff off, and then go out and explore the town. Because you can do that. You just have to go down to the checking desk and make sure you have your cards that you're going to have for the whole week. Get our cards, check out of the ship so that they know that we've left. Go do your own thing. And then when we come back, it's just like an ocean cruise, how you have to sign. Basically, you're signing in and out with your room key. Um sign out we could go explore the town and then come back b- yeah. right before dinner time or whatever scan back in and then be ready Get, to go getting off of an ocean cruise is a total hassle compared to a river cruise like it's it's not a hassle like it's really easy right you just it you go downstairs easy, you go down and you check out with security sometimes they scan, there's a little bit of a line right they scan your card you go off right um but when i say it's like so much easier on a river cruise because it's literally a tiny little card. It has just a barcode on it. And you literally name. stick underneath the barcode reader and you go out. Like that's yeah. it. It's so easy. So it's convenient. They, they do typically have somebody standing there, like making sure that everybody's scanning, but right. they do also kind of leave it like you're an adult. Right. You should be responsible enough to sign yourself in and out of the boat. Yeah. Because if you don't and they leave you behind, if you don't like, scan out, they're going to think that you're on the ship. They're going to think you're on the ship. So, so, granted, it's not like an ocean cruise where the next port of call is either another island or several hours away. Yeah, especially you're, you're for the Europe the ones, you could just jump on a train and go to the next city oh, and you'd be fine. Um, yeah, and I think, again, I think that's another big, like, misconception. Not a misconception, but, like, something that's just not thought about, mm-hmm. right, is because embarkation day on an ocean cruise, once you're on the ship, you don't get off. They don't let you come back down and go back out to yeah go on check embarkation out. day. Like you're right. when you're, you're on the ship, you're on the you're ship. On the ship. You can't get off. You cannot get off until the next port of call. Um, and I think that's just what is just makes this such a more relaxing and chill kind of environment vacation. Mm-hmm. Because I don't think we left till what was it like eight? I think you said like eight o'clock. It was maybe late. nine o'clock. It was late, right? It was it after was dinner. Late. Um, and. We could have, unbeknownst to us, gone out and came mm-hmm. back as much as we wanted to. Like it's they, yeah. I don't want to say that, that they don't care, but because the river cruise is operating basically within the EU, you're not really leaving. Kind of like it is on an ocean cruise, it, it, where yeah, you're going from like country to country, yes, exactly needing to clear customs or anything else like that. Like sometimes you are going from country to country, sure. but within Europe, it's. Right. Like it, you don't have to clear customs again. The operation to go is a little somewhere. bit different. Yeah. So it, it's really nice. And I think that um hundred percent, you know, the next time we do river cruise, we will hundred percent do that. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, because it was a missed opportunity that we just inexperienced, you know, and I've said this before in some of the other videos, and I'll probably start saying it more as kind of like a little mantra that like, you know, the mistakes that we make we like to share so that hopefully you won't make them as well. So if you're gonna do yeah. a river cruise and you're embarking in Switzerland and you want to go out and explore the town and you're getting in early, go drop yourself off and then go out, get a taxi, get an Uber, whatever. Um, free now, free now. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, you know, and, and have fun. And I think like we do share the mistakes that we make and they're not always bad mistakes for us. Like we still had a perfectly fine time and I actually think it was good for us that day to just kind of sit and relax a little bit because we ended up having such a crazy trip and that was really like our first real trip to Europe. The 24 hour flight that I said that we didn't actually have that. Yeah. (laughs) It felt like it. Um, it was, it, it was a nice way for us to kind of just relax for a little while because we had been traveling and like the time changes and it just, it gets a little crazy. Um, 
You're fine. Josh I'm just is coming doing to my, check the camera. I'm just doing my, I'm doing my, I'm doing my regular checks. You're a little bright over here. I didn't set that up. You did. <laughs> <laughs> a little brighty. You can keep talking. That's fine. Oh. Well, you're kind of blocking some of my light that's reflecting off the wall. Yeah, I know. I just want to just turn you down a wee bit oh, so I don't have to fix it as much. There okay. Um, but yeah, they're not necessarily bad mistakes for us, but they're essentially looking back on our experiences. They were mistakes that we didn't know were mistakes until afterwards. So that is why we like to share things that we think we could have done a different way. Right. So that way, if you do a trip like this, you will know, hey, well, I listened to Josh and Taylor, and they said that you can get off the river cruise ship and go explore the town for the day, and you just have right. to be back on before the ship's going to leave. Yeah. And there might be a ton of other people that are sitting there in the lounge on your embarkation day yeah. that also didn't know they could do that, and you go out and you have a fun little time like we found out people did and we right. didn't get to do. Right. So that's why we like to share these sort of things. Just to, Absolutely. you know things that we will do different next time well so, so continuing with embarkation day you know too I, I, this whole episode's probably going to be about embarkation day well, at this I, point. I, I mean I, <laughs> it is a little bit you know i mean when you're thinking about it's the first time i think embarkation day for the first like when you're on a ship is like really kind of everything um but with that being said you know we encourage everybody when you get on a ship on embarkation day take the time to go out and explore see what's on the ship and try to get, you know, your bearings on. Give yourself where a the little ship at. tour. Exactly. Where's yeah. the back is, where the front it is. It will take maybe five to ten minutes instead of a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that that was the other thing too, right? So once we were able to get into our rooms, we both showered um, and changed. And then we were like, okay, let's go explore because uh, dinner's in like an hour and a half or two hours or something. And, you know, we, we got to have time so that we can go. Check it out. Yep. Get all the video of the ship. And we're like done in five minutes, you know? And I, and I think that they, that's another thing that like maybe you don't think about because you've done ocean cruising so much is that a river cruise is very small. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a dis – it's like it's not a bad thing. Uh, I think it's yep. quite nice because you're not having to put 10,000 or 20,000 steps on your feet to go from your room to the buffet to the pool deck, back down, around, watch a show – it's a much more relaxed experience on board. Yeah, absolutely. And that's an, just another thing you have to keep in mind when you book one of these is you're not going to spend a lot of time on this ship. It's a literally closer. like a closer. It's literally like your hotel for the night in a place where you're going to be eating. It's not like an ocean cruise where you're like, oh, I can skip a port for the day because I want to spend time doing all the activities that are on board. Right. There just really isn't. This is just your way to get from one place to another while it is still really nice and the food is good and the drinks are good. Um, it's just very, <laughs> it's just very different. It is. I think another thing that people will often ask um, or people will search when they're like thinking of doing a river cruise is like, is it boring? Like, am I going to be bored on a river cruise? And that's up to you. Yeah, I mean, it is really one of those things that's kind of like personal preference as to like what you want to be doing. Um, you know, for us, we're really kind of like people who like to go out and explore the cities or we like to explore like where we're at. You know, um, we've tried to do like more relaxing trips. Uh, I think one that pops into my mind is like when we did Celebrity last year. Um, it was a short, we were aboard. Yeah, I mean, it was a short sailing uh, it was like a weekend, but it just, I felt restless. Um, yes, we were. And, and there just wasn't like a lot to do. Now, on a river cruise, depending on the itinerary you take, it might be a little slow. Um, but for us, you know, we were in a new city every single day. Yep. And we're in those cities almost all day long. So we're going out. We're exploring. We're doing all of these things. We might like, come back. I think and eat lunch. some days our excursions started at like seven o'clock in the morning. Early. They were like, "You need to be off the ship, outside 
by 7 a.m. or you're not going on this excursion. Right. And they did not wait. So if you weren't out there, you weren't going. Right. Like, at least you weren't going on the excursion. You were going out by yourself to figure stuff out. Yeah. Um, and it was nice because, like, if there was transportation, um, like, buses, they had buses set up. And they have everything planned out to have enough room for right. every single person on the ship to do every excursion every yeah. day. And we'll, we'll talk more about that. But, like... But and, no, go ahead. No, never mind. Well, just like I don't want to get too far off topic of like talking about being activities specifically for the ship. Well, I was just going to say like you – it's not that you have to be active to do the excursions, but you do have to be pretty mobile to do the excursions right. in Europe specifically because it's a lot of cobblestone, a lot of uneven terrain. Um, so it's just something to think about if you're going to pick – a river cruise. Yeah. Um, and then I don't remember. Well, hold that thought. Um, so going back to like, is the cruise going to be boring and needing to make that decision for yourself? There definitely are not anywhere near as many or even close to activities that you would find on an ocean cruise. Basically, um, if you don't you know, get off and go do an excursion, you're going to be sitting on the ship, not doing anything all right. day long. And depending on the time of the year, there will be more or less things to do. Right. So like for us, being a Christmas cruise, it's wintertime, it's colder. The upper deck, like, not wasn't really open, like, ever. And mostly because of uh, ice, because um, it was really weird weather while we were there. Um, but it's also really cold. So you're going to be spending most of your time inside. And so if you're not going out, then the activities on board are kind of, like, up to you and finding something to do. Um, they do have a pool. Most of the river cruise uh, ships do have pools that you can go in. They're not huge. Mm -hmm. But you can go in there and relax. Some of them even have a hot tub. Ours did not. But um, I believe the pool was heated. So it is comfortable. So. Well, and um, this is what else I was thinking about. Um, you know, I said it's like up to you if you want your river cruise to be boring or not. Um, and you don't have to be, you know, super active. You just have to be mobile to do like the excursions and stay you know, get off the ship to go explore. Um, if you want a vacation that's going to be like super relaxing where you can sit around. I mean, if you have the money to just sit around on a river cruise for a week, more power to you. But you have to think about like what your expectations are of this trip. Like there are some people like that celebrity cruise that we did that that would be the perfect trip for them because they just want to sit around. They want to relax. They want right. to enjoy a pool. They want to enjoy the views. That we definitely found out that's not the trip for us. Right. We like to go places. We like to see things. And that's definitely what a river cruise is more about is being able to see the smaller towns and cities that are more inland versus an ocean cruise, like I said earlier, that's just being able to get to the coast. Um, you can go to so many cool places on along the rivers. In ours was mostly Germany. Right. Um, but it's really cool. Yeah. And, and when it comes to like finding things to do on the ship. So that's not to say that. the It's that just the, so funny that you're like talking about finding something to do on the ship because <laughs> there just really is well, anything. There isn't, but there is. So like, it's not like they don't do any activities or anything like that. Um, they will put activities on, on the ship. They're typically not going to be at the same time that they are offering excursions. Um, they're usually going to be like after lunch more towards the evening. So they'll have local musicians and bands come on um, mm -hmm. and perform. Uh, they will have guest speakers come on and talk about the local culture of mm -hmm. different things that are going on. They do have games like they'll play bingo. Mm -hmm. um, they, I want to say, I think they even did karaoke one night. Which they did. We is, went to bed. Yeah. I mean, we were exhausted most of the trip, but you know, the thing is, is that like you, you Taylor's right in that, you know, the trip can be kind of whatever you want it to be. Um, I think that something that you need to think about is that typically for our sailing, now this can vary from sailing to sailing, but typically for ours, they're usually in the morning when they start for the, what's included. And in the afternoon, you kind of have, sailing? Or are you talking about the excursions? Sorry, the excursions um, oh, okay. are usually in the morning. And then in the afternoon, you have that time to yourself to do whatever you want. Just be back on the ship. Whether that's like going out and exploring the town some more right. on your own, going out and sitting down <laughs> somewhere to eat. Um, finding more shops in our, right. in our and, situation, we went and saw more Christmas markets. Yeah. And so for some of you, you might find 
that to be enough to go out in the morning, do the walking tour, whatever they're offering for everybody, learn more about the city that you're in. And then maybe you want to go back and read a book and sit by the window. And that's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. That's not our style. Um, you know, like Taylor said, we would we went, basically like <laughs> I think only a few times we actually went back and ate lunch, and then yeah, we came did back a couple out. of times. Um, and when we went back to eat lunch, like I would take a couple, I'd take like a thirty minute nap. Yeah, because you're just because of the way we do it, where we're out pretty much all day, just maybe coming back for lunch or maybe not. You're so tired from well, just walking around, and you're you're too. trying to keep yourself warm because it yeah. was freezing outside. Um, I needed a nap every day, but then after that nap and having a little bit of lunch, I was ready to go again. Right. And we'd go back on out, and we'd go walking around. And it's not like we weren't like hiking or anything. We're literally just like walking through towns. Yeah, you're just walking um, in the cityscapes. But sometimes it just is a lot of walking, and yeah. Uh, if you've ever gone anywhere with Josh or have noticed in any of our videos, he's always on the hustle. So Can't going around with Josh places is sometimes very tiring. <laughs> but you can take it at your own pace. Yeah. Well, and another thing I think we should talk about, too, just real briefly, is that uh, something that Taylor mentioned was, like, mobility. Um, you know, obviously we're younger, uh, and I don't want anybody to, like, be offended by us being younger and being on a river cruise. But – it is. It was a little sad to like see the age of some people, um, and they were kind of just struggling to keep up. You know, there was. Uh, it, there is a. Um, I don't even know what you call it. I can't think. Um, I don't but, know either. But a lot of the people stereotype. Oh. Stereotype sure. for river cruises is an older population. Well, I'd like to say a river cruise stereotype is 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 wiser and wealthier is is oh, the yes. that's actually really good because that is what it is right it 100 yes. like that is be, what's on a river you cruise. have to be a little you have to be wiser and wealthier to be on a river cruise yeah. that is the stereotype. i can see that uh there was only one other couple younger than us on that ship i thought there were two couples that were younger than us mm. or about the same no age, that maybe. was a brother and sister that were with their parents oh right 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 yeah. yes um and then there was a couple that was younger than us no there's another couple the one couple that was real young was from Florida. They were those dancers. Yeah, they had just they, got married. They had just gotten married. There was another couple that we sat with on the boat when we were oh, doing the yeah, tour. Yeah, yeah, I did forget Amsterdam. about them. Yeah. I did yeah, forget yeah. about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were younger too. And then there were like those two kids that were like maybe were just like over 18 high school, or just yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah, besides those couple of people <laughs> that we saw yeah. on our cruise, it was a lot of wiser and wealthier if you will well i think we can all assume that they were certainly wiser wealthier that's debatable on whether some of them were or not well yeah but based just on some of the conversations that we overheard yeah. um sitting yeah. in the lounge you know bacon man that's what i like to call yeah, him bacon man. he was he was unhappy the whole entire He's a trip upset. and i really wanted to know why he even went but we know that he didn't pay for it so <laughs> that we do know yep he made that very clear yes um, but anyway, it's just a different crowd that is associated with river cruising. Um, but I definitely think there's no reason why river cruising can't be for any age of adults. And right. I say adults because river cruising is not exactly, it's not that it's not child friendly, but it's just really not family friendly. Um, Pretty much every state room is double occupancy. There are right. no rooms on most river cruises that can accommodate more than two people. There are some. There are some. Um, but it's really like a couple's or friend's or right. um, adult-type trip. Yeah. Um, it's not that you can't take your children because there were some teen. There were two teens on our ship. Right. Um, but it's also kind of like would they enjoy this type of trip is the other thing. Um. Well, the other thing that I was getting to as well, though, is mobility. So, unfortunately, with river cruises, most of the ships don't have elevators. Ours, Ours did, did have an elevator, which was surprising. But that elevator only went from the deck that the lounge was on, where you could get off the ship, um, and down to where the uh, restaurant was. So, if you wanted to actually go well, up to the get, sun deck, they you could, could get on and off the ship on both decks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you wanted to go up to the sun deck, there was no elevator to get up there. There's no ramp. You have to take the stairs. So 
that's something that you have to keep in mind with like mobility stuff. I mean, Europe in general is like best way to describe is just cobblestone. Think that like any city that you're going to go into, you're probably going to have to like cross walk over beyond cobblestone. It's uneven. It's just it's not, not flat. very accessible. If right. You will. It is a little bit more difficult to walk about on. So that is something that is worth keeping in mind. And that's kind of why I bring up the age thing as well, because like, if this is something that you're thinking about and you're listening to this, um, you know, if, if you feel like it might be out of, out of your like price range, like start saving right now to go do it because it's a yes. really great once on a lifetime trip. Um, that like, we just like, I, like I say, it's kind of sad, but like, we just saw some people on there that were like really elderly. Yes, um, they were. And had a really difficult time getting around, and I don't know that we they actually, had a very good time because they couldn't see much. We we actually, so you're seeing the same people all day, every single day. Um, you're going to be on this excursions with the same people all the time. Sometimes they like people switch groups or whatever, um, but we only saw this one elderly couple that Josh had mentioned. We only saw them get off the ship one day. Right. We did not see them get off the ship again. Um, and I really think it was probably because they just couldn't get around. Um, one of them was in a wheelchair and mm-hmm. one of them was using a walker. And the like we were some a couple of the towns we went to were kind of in the middle of nowhere. Right. Um, and you had to get up you had to walk upstairs to get on the bus. They didn't really have even the ramp accessible buses. Even the ramp to get off the ship. That sometimes day, it would Strauss, be really steep. Stroudsburg, I think, was a prime example because it was, it was icy. Super icy. Koblenz was super icy. Yeah. I almost fell. Right. Right. Um so we say this a lot, but like to each other. And Everybody has a different lifestyle and the way they choose to live and travel. But one thing we think about a lot is if there is a trip that you really want to do, whether that's a river cruise or going to Hawaii or just even just going to like Florida to the beach. Going to the Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon, whatever. Don't wait until you are retired to do it if you can. Right. Because... Not that you would not have a good time then, but in different stages of your life, you're going to have a different experience. Right. I mean, you just don't know what could happen tomorrow. I mean, that's the other thing. And you really don't. So if there's something you want to do, start saving and plan for it because you just never know. Do whatever you can to make it happen. Yep. um, I'm still trying to get to Japan, though. Right. That's on the top of my list. We uh, So I think the other thing... Um, so we're talking about embarkation day, but this is, we're kind of like moving on to like just the overall river, general overall, river cruise right, itself. Um, and I think that that's food. So I think one thing that I was really disappointed by, but later was okay with was the fact that, um, I eat too much. That's not what I'm disappointed by, but is the fact that like Taylor knows where I'm going with this. Cause I, do, I and I have I something said to this, say about this. Cause I watched a video the other day. I said this when we were on the ship, um, was that like, There's nowhere to go at basically like once dinner's over, there is no late night snacks. There's no like place that's open late for pizza. There's no Sorrento's pizza. Right. There's no late night buffet. Um, (laughs) And and other cruise, like other river cruise companies may operate differently. I don't believe so. But for the most part, they're all going to operate as in breakfast, lunch, and dinner and tea time. So, or breakfast, lunch, tea time, and then dinner. Yeah. Tea's Um, like mid afternoon. Yeah. and, And all of that is included. So you don't have to pay anything extra for that, which I think is really nice. Mm-hmm. There's also no specialty restaurant on right. either. There's one main dining yeah. room, one lounge, one bar. Right. Like that's yeah. That's um cool. and so breakfast is uh, breakfast was buffet. They mm-hmm. also had a uh, egg station. Yep. Um, which again was uh the bacon man. That's what I think about every time now. I, I think know about you breakfast. Do. Um, you know, was this one guest who just like. I don't know. He just wasn't having it. This was the guy that did not enjoy the river cruise, yes. like, at all. Yeah. He um, was on our excursion twice, and it was just like, it's, it's probably we got to get away from him. It's probably wrong to say, but I, I feel better by thinking that, like, his friends brought him on the cruise because maybe he had some terminal illness. It was his once-in-a-lifetime trip. Josh like, is just trying to make himself feel better about the situation we in- witnessed this whole entire trip. Exactly, because this guy was just... <laughs> A little irate 
almost every day. Mm-hmm. But um, so yeah, breakfast buffet, literally like it's American style. So you're gonna find everything that you would find. Mostly Americanized. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. You know, eggs, uh, bacon that may or may not be cooked to your liking. Um, <laughs> I it was it was cooked perfectly fine. But, it was perfectly. But fine. Bacon Man said that it wasn't. Um, you know, I think they had ham. They had different proteins, sausage, uh, vegetables. You had some cereals, different milks. I, literally, like, what you would find for, like, a, a breakfast, breakfast buffet. buffet. That's what they had. Mm-hmm. And an egg station. So if you wanted omelets, you could have an omelet, whatever. Um, lunch, I think, was really unique. I kind of liked it because... I did like lunch. You had a buffet. Yep. Um, but then you could also have, like, a sit-down meal. Yeah. And it they wasn't have, one or the other. They would have soups and, like, pastas up on the buffet with, like, salad and cheeses right. and some meats and, like, breads. And then you could also order off a small menu right. for lunch if there yeah. wasn't something up on the buffet. That but I think wanted. they still did, like, steak. We had right? steak almost every day on yeah. this trip. But they still had, like, steak <laughs> for lunch. So, like, Taylor says a small menu. Um, Yeah, small, small but, like. Small compared to when you think of an ocean cruise, sure. like, menu. Yeah. And again, it's it's what I think is really cool too when it comes to dining, is that it is local, um, local like options, but they always also yeah, then like have local American to the region that you're sure. cruising. But then they also have like American favorites. So like mm-hmm. they always had a steak every night. Steak and fries. They they would typically have some type of uh, chicken and a fish. fish. Mm-hmm. Um, but but I love lunch though because you had that option. You could do okay. the buffet. Or you could also order, you know, off the menu. Yeah, because there were days that I just did, like, the whatever the pasta dish was that they had up at the buffet. I would do that and, like, a salad from the right. salad bar. And then there was another day where they actually – we had a German lunch while we were cruising oh, yes. the one day. Yeah. And that was the best lunch of the whole it week, It was really I think. good, yeah. Um, because they did have some stuff up on the buffet, but then you could order. They had, like, schnitzel and right. – ever They had – oh, they had some really good stuff. They had pretzels. Yeah. They had like the pretzels and cheese. <laughs> I, I will say, so going back to what I said by being disappointed, it was just that like I felt like I needed to eat. He needed snacks, and but, they don't have snacks. Really. But I didn't really need that. Um, yeah. And I, you know, elaborating further on this, soda or pop, mm-hmm. um, beer and wine are included with lunch. Same with dinner. Yeah. Now, you don't get a wine list, and you don't get a beer list. Uh, they will tell you, do you want white or red? Um, and typically every night we had white, mm-hmm. even if we had steak. Yep. Um, I never got any beer because you guys, if you guys have been watching us, you know, I don't like beer. Um, but we saw plenty of other passengers having beer to drink that was included. So if you did want to have the list of wines, the list of spirits, you can purchase a drink package. Mm-hmm. Or um, you can purchase per beverage. Or per beverage, yeah, right. Um, uh, but... I mean, for as little as we spent on the ship, it didn't make sense for us to have one. It did not. Um, but I love this because it really expanded my own palate when it came to wine, specifically white wine, because like Taylor's going to have a glass. Expanded like, his palate. All he drinks now is Riesling. <laughs> I, I do drink some white wines. I will drink a Chardonnay. Please. If it's not he super dry. He doesn't like dry. No. And it has but he, a, he doesn't like dry, but he doesn't like sweet. What if I got a dry wine and put simple syrup in it and like mix it up? You think it would work? You could try it, but it just would. I don't think it would be right. I don't know, but it it was nice, and I and I loved that aspect that that stuff was included. Again, I just I felt like it helped me expand. Maybe it didn't, but so I felt it did. um, we would love to do another river cruise. So we've been trying to do a little bit of research to see, you know, if there's a river cruise option that would work well for us, um, and the places that we want to go. So we've been doing some research. So the other night, I I don't watch a ton of YouTube videos. Um, I'm always, like, doing something on my computer. But I finally sat down the other night on the couch and was watching a few River Cruise videos. Um, I, I did watch from a couple different cruise lines. Just to, I was trying to get, like, overview videos of, like, what's included. And um, something came up on my TikTok the other day, too, of a couple different River Cruises. It must have been, like, listening to whatever I was watching. You saying watching YouTube videos. I'm like, you're not watching YouTube videos. You're probably just watching No, I literally sat – you were on your computer finishing something the other night, and I sat down on the couch, and I actually – What? I actually watched a couple YouTube videos. I – well, I skimmed them. I was just trying to find, like, certain things that I wanted to hear about. So I did scroll through a few. Oh, quit. 
Shelly so just moved his legs and Josh's like, I don't want that. She just started <laughs> growling at him. Aries. She just woke up like a freaking zombie. Um, anyway, what it seems like across the board is that there are not snacks right. on any other river cruise right. lines. Well, it's an American so, thing. Something I thought about is that if we do go on another river cruise, because we would we loved the experience that we had, and we'd love to go back and either do Christmas markets again on a different itinerary or a different cruise line, or um, maybe do one where we can see like summertime or sure. flow, like some tulips right. um, or something. We we want to do something. Um, so what I told Josh is that we need to make sure that either in the airport we pick up some uh, snacks or we pack some snacks in our checked bag from home right. to make sure that we have some snacks for in our room so that he's not whining before <sighs> bed that he needs a snack. <laughs> well, I feel like, did we not end up buying, or we had talked about maybe buying something to take back onto the ship with us one day in the uh, markets? Yeah, we did, but we... We didn't end up We didn't end up something. doing anything. The only thing we ended up taking back to the ship was at the very end in Amsterdam, uh, we got Stroop waffles, oh, and right. we only like took a bite of them but while we were out in Amsterdam. But that wasn't back on the ship, though, was it? Huh? That wasn't... We did take them back on oh, the right, ship Oh, right, because we got there the night before. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. And that's actually something different on the river cruises compared to ocean cruises is that you can bring, like, your food and drink with you yes. back onto the ship. Right. Um. So... I was actually just thinking sometimes about Sometimes they're like, really weird about, like, um, open food containers and stuff when you come back onto an ocean cruise, which does make sense because it's, like, a whole agricultural thing and whatever. Right. Um, but because you're staying within, like, the same region um, on the river cruise, it's not, like, the same. Um, we're assuming that that's probably the reason, yeah. Yeah. Because you're within um, the EU. Because we had Stroop waffles that were, like, freshly made in a bakery that they just put in, like, a little package and folded it over. Um we took those back on the river cruise with us, and it was not a big deal at all. Um, so we did eat those later. That yeah. Was, that was literally the last day. Well, that's what I was just thinking, because you do have a mini fridge in the room. Yeah. Um, there, obviously, it's a charge if you take yes, anything out of there There to is drink. some stuff in there. But, but uh, you know, I don't know if you could ask the room attendant to come in and empty that, and you could go out and bring back, like, you know, a 12-pack of Coke Zero or something to put in the fridge. I'm just saying, like, Josh it's an is option. on a Coke. Josh is just on a zero soda. I know. Drink. I had a Mountain Dew Zero for the first time. And I was like, oh, Yeah, my life. I was really craving a Baja Blast, and he's like, I'm gonna get a Mountain Dew Zero. Yeah. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Had one for the first time the other day, and I was like, oh. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, like, that's a good option, you know. I mean, even when you go out, uh, you know, stop at like, you know, a little market or something, and grab mm -hmm. some snacks, bring them back on to the ship take them back to your room and then you have them to eat. Yeah. Um, now I was upset only because that first night I did not sleep like at all. He refused to take a NyQuil or Advil PM or Benadryl or right. anything that I had in my bag. He's like, I'll be fine. I'll sleep tonight because I was awake for the last well, 24 yes, hours. Right. No, well, he did not. Sleep. I mean, like this is my first time, right? This is a mistake. I have since learned from that mistake. I don't do that anymore. First night I'm popping some Advil PMs. And a glass of wine, I'm going to sleep. So, uh, you know, when you're up at, like, granted that even on an ocean cruise, like, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, like, there's not, like, Sorrento's isn't going to be open. Um, but you could do room service if you wanted yeah. to. Uh, that was really the only time. We did so much stuff out in port that usually we came back, had dinner. Went lots, to bed. Lots of wine. Because here's the other thing, too. With that stuff that's included, it's not like, oh, you only have one glass of wine and that's it. Nope, they just keep coming around you and filling your glass. Sip. You take a sip, and they're like, oh, looks like you had some. It's like my mom at the Luau in Disney World sure. years ago. Yeah. Because uh, the beer and wine and whatever was included with your price of right. the admission to the Luau. And I will never forget, my mom would, like, take one sip of her Bud Light, and two seconds later, they had another full one sitting next to it. We almost didn't make it back to our hotel at Port Orleans that night. Yeah. <laughs> we um and I think the other thing too is like if I had one complaint with with the food on this was specific to Emerald because the food overall I thought was really great. The only thing and I'm pretty sure Taylor's going to agree with me was the daily soup for lunch. 
Even for dinner, the soup wasn't good. Even for dinner. I don't yeah. think I remember getting Only soup that much. Only when they had, they had chicken noodle one day, and that one was perfectly fine. Right. But the rest of it was just... It seemed like they may have been reusing the same broth. Like the, it was like the stock or whatever. Right. It just was wasn't... the same every day. It wasn't very good. So, no. um, but, but other than that, I mean, like, it was really good. So, food was great. Um, and I think, like, moving into, like, excursion stuff, what's great is that... Not only do you have something that's included every single day, but it's an upcharge, but it wasn't that much of an upcharge. No. Like it, 40 It was anywhere it might have been from 50 like bucks. it was like 25 to $50 per, per person. person. You could do a second excursion right. each day, yeah. which was something um a little bit more special than the morning excursions. Right. And it wasn't just stacked right on top of it. You know, no, typically there was, it was like, like a, there was like a break and then yeah. it was later in the day. You would go out, do whatever. You could come back and eat lunch and then still have time to then go and do whatever that next excursion was. And so we did do that. We did that in Copla. Co- no. Yeah, uh, it was Koblenz. Was it Koblenz? Yes, because we had that nice little old guy as our tour guide. Yeah, he was awesome. So, mm-hmm. uh, and that was really cool. And it wasn't that much more money. Again, it was like, I don't remember the exact amount, but it was like about maybe. I want to say it was like $50 a person. Yeah. Yeah. So. And it was like a long, because every day in port is really long. Right. Um, like because you're just going six or seven a six or seven a.m. to like sometimes almost ten p.m. Right. We're there. Yeah. Um, I remember the one time we were literally at one of the ports till like the middle of the night, and then we left, and we were still at the next place by like seven in the right. morning. Um, but yeah, we had like a little nice afternoon break. We went back to the ship, had lunch, relaxed for a little bit, and then um, our meeting place for this next excursion was like literally a block from the ship right. and they had a bus already waiting there for everybody that was on yeah. this paid excursion. Um, and we got to go to a castle it was cool. and it was really cool. Yeah. We got to go see another like little Christmas market at yeah. nighttime. That was, that was in Kokum. That was in Kokum. Yeah. It was really cool. Um, and I think just going on with the excursions that you, again, like Taylor mentioned, it's concierge. Like, throughout the length of the cruise. Yeah, like, everything is, like, feels concierge. And that carries on even when you get off the ship. Um, When we went to, um, crap, where we went to the castle that was no longer really used, but they had the wine cellar down there, and we tried the wine. Was that, that was in, um, oh my gosh. But anyways, uh, it was really icy out that day. It was really cold. Um, and our tour guide that we had on the bus said that, like, you know, it was really abnormal that it was, like, this cold. It doesn't usually get this cold uh, here in Germany. Uh, it was really icy out. Heidelberg. So, Heidelberg, yes. Um, so what was cool was that when we finally got to Heidelberg, the buses weren't actually able to get up to where the castle was at. Well, our cruise director came off and was out and about with us. She ran ahead and went up to where they had the little train things that go up. Funiculars? Funicular. Funiculars. Uh, and got us all tickets so that we didn't have to go wait in line to get those or anything mm-hmm. else. Like, it was all taken care of. Yep. And they did that before. I mean, she kind of got there, like, as we were getting there, but, like, still, yeah. like, we didn't really wait. Yeah. Um, and it was really nice. It was, again, this kind of, like, concierge level of service that like follows just, you around. They made sure everybody right. was taken care of right. and that we were still going to get to have that right. experience, We had, even though the bus couldn't get up there. Yeah, and they required us to wear a mask on the funicular, so they also got us masks. Yes. So that we yep. didn't have to worry about that, you know. So, like on an ocean cruise, right, if, like, something like that happens, they're just going to cancel. And you'll have to rebook yep. and do something else, right? You're not going to have the cruise director out there following you around and doing things. So, um, I think that that's just another, like, it's what you, you get what you pay for. And I know it's expensive, but the value there that comes with that price is expectations and sure. value of what you're paying for. Right. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think if we are missing anything that we should probably cover or there talk about. There is so much more that we could talk about. Um, the nice thing, so after you do, um, your like daily excursion, which is typically like a walking tour, sometimes they have wine tasting. Sometimes we, um, got to have black forest cake. Um, like they do different little things for you. Um, and then like we got to go, um, on the funicular, which wasn't actually even part of our tour, but ended up becoming part of our tour, Mm -hmm. which was nice. Um, but we have, sometimes you have to ride a bus to get into some of these towns, 
Um, and they're like 30, 40 minutes away from where the ship is actually docked. Um, so typically they will try to give you like an hour or so of free time in that little town before they take you back to the boat. Right. Um, and then, you know, you're still docked there for hours sometimes. Um, but it's also docked near another town. They just don't have the included excursion going there. Right. So you can get off and go out and walk around by yourself, which is what we did. Yeah. Well, and something that was specific to the Rhine in the, the itinerary that we had was Heidelberg was actually a day that was only a half day. So they bust us out into Heidelberg, um, and then they brought us back. And you didn't really get to go and walk around because literally, like, the boat was leaving to go and actually sail down the river, um, which was something that we didn't really get to experience because most of the time we were sailing at nighttime and we're sleeping. So it was (laughs) really cool because part of that itinerary was getting to see all of the castles along the Rhine. Through the middle Rhine. Through the middle Rhine, right. So we actually had to leave around lunchtime. Mm -hmm, Um, We did end up, I guess guess later that night was when we stopped at Rudesheim. We didn't get off the ship. Yeah, because a lot of stuff was closed by the time we got there. Yeah. I think some of the Christmas market might have been open maybe for like another 30 minutes. And we just felt like we're not going to run. I could have, but um, yeah, we didn't get off. So we just had dinner. We went to bed. But then when we got up in the morning, um, it was really cool because we're now like sailing down the middle Rhine. And there's just castle after castle Mm -hmm. that you could see. So that's another day when we kind of go back to like, what is there to do on the ship? Um that was a day where I think, like, the obviously the, the spectacle was just seeing these old castles. Yeah. Now, if you're not into that, you might find that that boring. Yeah, and our cruise director was actually sitting, um, like, at her desk where she has a microphone. Yeah. And she was announcing overhead, like, what was on each side of the ship um, the whole time we were cruising right. through this area. So it was really cool. It was kind of like we were getting a boat tour right. of the Middle Rhine yeah. for the day. Yeah, and you couldn't go up to the sun deck, but um, the ship that we were on to the front. had, yeah, they still had like a little like patio esque mm-hmm. like. Josh kept going out there balcony. freezing. Well, I mean, like you know, if you wanted to get a nice unobstructed glass without the glass yeah. shot, I mean, that's where you had to go. Well, and he didn't want to. He forgot his gloves in the room, which would have taken him two minutes to not go even. back and get the not 30 even thirty seconds probably, literally to go back to the room and come back out to get the gloves. Um, and he's just like, no, no, I'll be fine. I'm like, buddy, like the yeah. rooms, I, I can like almost see the door to our room from sitting here in the lounge. And that was probably the only day where you would struggle with the seat in the lounge. Um, not we, that you would struggle with the seat. We got out there really early though. But a seat that you would want next like to the window. Like by the window. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, it, it was another day that like, again, you can do the same itinerary in the, in the summertime. Obviously mm-hmm. this won't be the Christmas markets. Uh, so you can have that experience up on the on the top deck and, you know, the nice Some breeze. of the different cruise lines actually have pools up on the top deck sure. or like hot tubs or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be really cool to experience during the summertime. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it was it, it was just it was great. Um, and I'm sure that we probably have left some things out. So if you're listening and you've done a river cruise before, you know, drop them down below and let us know. Um or if you have more questions about river cruising, let us know because we can definitely get you booked on a river cruise. It doesn't cost you anything extra. We're here to help um, figure out the itinerary and where you need to go, what you want to do. Uh, what's really great, though, about a river cruise is that like a lot of that stuff's taken care of for you yep. by the cruise company. So um, even some cruises, you can do uh, flights. Like It's a little extra, but it's kind mm-hmm. of a savings um, where you can book the flights with the cruise line. And yep. again, everything is kind of all inclusive, uh, taking, taking care of for you. So yeah. Anything left to add? I think we covered a lot, but we just had such a good time on this, the river cruise, the one river cruise we went on made such an impact on us, um, for future travel that, I could literally go on and on and on about that trip for like hours because it was so great. Um, And that is now it's not that we just now started looking at another river cruise. We've literally been looking at going on another river cruise since we were on that last river cruise. Absolutely. Um, We just, there's so much that we want to see and do. We're just, 
we're trying to prioritize, but we're also trying to look at like, because flights are such a big expense when you travel, we're also looking at like, okay, well, when would flights be a little bit of a better price? Or could we book our flights through the River Cruise Line and maybe save a little bit of money there? So, right. um, yeah, so we've been looking at doing another River Cruise for quite some time. There are a bunch of itineraries that I have in the back of my mind that I really want to do. Um, it's just figuring out what in our schedule and what flights are going to be the best. Right. But, yeah. <laughs> so. But, yeah, I could go on and on about this. So I'm sure there's something that we missed, but I think we covered, like, the high points. I think so. Yeah. Um, awesome. So this is getting posted uh, not till Monday. Uh, we will be on our way to Disney. In Universal. <laughs> so we're going to do a podcast maybe from the car. In preparation for future upcoming podcasts, have we announced the big trip that we just planned in like two weeks? Uh, we did not officially announce it on anything. We Except for Patreon. Pa Patreon got We the asked some questions. We've we asked, asked some, some questions and they did get the official announcement. Instagram subscribers also got the official announcement. But we also asked... And some we questions. did ask some questions on Instagram and YouTube, YouTube. community page, um, but it is official. Yeah, so all if, the hotels if you're, are officially if you're paying booked. attention. You, if you're paying attention, if you're paying attention, you know what's going to happen. But um, we're going to use that as a trial run to do some podcasting in the car. And you might be like, oh, "How could you ever do that? You'll be distracted." Yes, we're we're going to really be easy. staying on Disney property next week. Right. For a couple days, yeah. we're going to be staying at a moderate resort, and then we're actually moving to a little special thing right. for one night, which I cannot wait for. Because I don't know if Caitlin wanted to do a podcast on there, or maybe she's wanting to do one. I'm not talking about that yet. I'm talking about the one night. Yeah, of I know. Some, oh, yeah. We well, could she, do a think, podcast I, there. I thought she said something about wanting to do podcasts. Oh, we could definitely so. do. We could do a podcast and both things that we're doing with them. Right. Uh. But yeah, we're having like a little Disney trip. We've got like a little surprise hotel stay um, that we're just doing for one night. Um, but it'll be exciting. And then uh, we're doing a short little weekend cruise. We literally get home for maybe 24 hours. Probably not. And then we're going to be flying. We're going to be flying somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you've been paying attention, you know what's going to be coming up. Um, and so we're going to use the, the drive to practice doing some podcasts for that big upcoming trip because the big upcoming trip is a road trip um, and it's going to be a lot of fun, but we're going to have a lot of time in the car. Uh, I'm assuming um, bouncing from location we'll to location at least enough. Like I think we'll have enough to do like a podcast every day, here. but no. like there will be Maybe a, a few times where we'll have an hour plus sure. drive yeah. getting somewhere that we can do a podcast yeah. in the car. So those, those will not be shot like this, obviously where we're shooting on, on the real we'll cameras. Be, we'll be side by side with what the GoPro, the 360. Yeah. We'll have the 360 probably mounted to the car windshield. Um, and you know, and I'll be able to just cut it and you guys will see, but yeah, um, yeah it's exciting. I'm excited. Um, and hopefully you guys are all excited out there. So um, the next podcast will be on the road. I love being able to say that. It'll be on the road. The next couple podcasts right. will be on the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take this podcast yeah. on the road. We should um, do another one on the road when for our trip in May. We should do, um, let's see how many crappy bathrooms we can stop at. Come on, Taylor. man. Because she has to pee like every five minutes. I have to pee a lot. I actually have to go right now. So I'm like struggling. I have to, I have I to like. I drank like all of my water in my cup. I have to dehydrate Taylor for the he, trip down. We literally do. Um, because otherwise I'm like constantly having to stop like yeah. every two hours or so. And yeah. Josh cannot stand it because he could hold it all day long. I, on yeah. the other hand, cannot. Uh, and but, he picks the worst bathrooms. In my defense, I asked Hold on, Taylor. I just have to tell you this because you'll you'll understand um, if you've ever worn a one piece swimsuit before. Um, so we were on our way to Cocoa Beach years ago, literally just for the day. Went to Cocoa Beach, or not Cocoa? Yeah, it was yeah, Cocoa we Beach. We were going to Cocoa it was Beach. Cocoa Beach. Yep. We we're just going over there for the day. Josh wanted to go like just want to go laying out, play out on in the, the ocean and whatever. So I'm like, okay. Well, I wore a one piece swimsuit underneath my clothes because i'm like i don't want to have to change once we get there like i'll change after that's fine but i don't want to have to change when we get there 
we're up in the touristy, nicer area of Cocoa Beach, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, can we stop at like that a real bathroom? nice racetrack that's right there, yeah. right as you come into Cocoa Beach? There's like a racetrack right on the right hand side. There's like a bunch of places, and I'm like, oh, can we stop here so I can go to the bathroom real quick? And he's like, oh, he's like, we'll stop when we get down a little further to where like we're gonna park. And I'm like, okay, but look, we're like right here, and like I know this is gonna be a nice bathroom, or like you know a better bathroom anyway. I'm like can I just like stop here? No, no, no. It'll be fine. Like we're just going a couple more minutes down the road. I'm like, okay, whatever. We get to the place where Josh is like ready to park the car. He finds this gas station with bars on the windows. They put bars on his window, mom. Yeah. Bars on the windows. And Josh is like, here, we'll pull in here. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Paint's chipping off the side of the building. Like, the parking lot's full of potholes. Like, you can't judge a book by its cover, but you can judge a gas station by its cover. Oh, boy. And I was like, please. So then I have to go in. I run to the bathroom because I have to pee bad at this point. Go to open the door. Door's locked. There's a sign on the door. Come to the front to get the key. I'm like, oh, great. Run up, get the key. Go back to the bathroom, open it up. It is the dirtiest bathroom I have seen in a long time. I also have a one piece on underneath my clothes. So I literally have to like undress myself to be able to go to the bathroom while also there's no hook for me to put my clothes on anything and try not to drop my clothes on the floor. Oh, I was not happy when I came back out to the car. No, I was not. I don't not think happy. Josh got to spend much time at the beach that day. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but this has happened on multiple occasions where he li- I, I literally in my think defense, he scopes out the worst possible bathroom. In my bathrooms. defense. I'd rather go on the side of the road. In my than defense. Than go in some of these bathrooms. Any time that we are on the road, Taylor has to pee. I say find a bathroom that you're willing to go to, put it into the GPS, and that is where we'll stop at. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep driving because if you're not if you don't have that enough initiative to find one that you want to go to, you must not have to go that bad. Best bet for good bathrooms, if you're ever on a road trip in the U.S., are going to be, like, name brand uh, gas stations, if you will. So, like, Racetrack, Wawa, Sheets. Uh, what's the other one? There's another one. Not Racetrack, but it's also, like, Red. Raceway? No. Speedway. Speedway and Racetrack are, like, the two... Uh, reddish looking ones speed one and race speedway and racetrack speed one and railway <laughs> wawa sheets those are like bucky's bucky oh obviously bucky's bucky's so. is the best i don't know what's like further out west right mcdonald's okay. is also a off, great option we're way off topics now, yes and so. i really have to go to the bathroom now it has been great having you all here thanks for listening and uh we'll catch you on the road in next week's episode bye everybody <laughs> we'll catch you on the road